Welcome to our live event to uh, meet your major for the middle childhood uh, education program. So we are definitely here to talk about middle childhood education. And um, I'm excited to be here tonight. My name is Corbin. I'm the undergraduate enrollment advisor for the College of Education, Criminal Justice, Human Services, and Information Technology. And um, <laughs> and uh, so tonight, I guess, like I said, we're highlighting the School of Education and talking about middle childhood education. Uh, so we have several panelists tonight. So our student panelists are uh, Maggie Lorenz, Michael Slater, or Kirby Slater, as I like to call him, uh, and Emily, and I am so sorry, Emily, if I say your last name right, but Emily Holofelder. Um, and then we also have a faculty member tonight, Susan Gregson, program coordinator and faculty for the Middle Childhood Education Program. So if you guys, right now, if you want to hear, go ahead and turn on your videos and your audios and um, say, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Michael Slater, or like what Corbin said, uh, Kirby Slater. Uh, nice to meet you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Maggie Lorenz. And I don't know, Emily might be having some issues. Uh, but Susan, are you on here? I am on here. Uh, uh, I am Susan Gregson, and I'm the Middle Childhood Program Coordinator. Okay, awesome. So uh, Kirby and Maggie, you care a little, what year, let us know what year you guys are the program. So I'm a third year in the middle ed program and I'm specializing in math and science. And I'm currently in my fourth year of the middle childhood uh, education program and I am math and science as well. Okay, awesome. want to make sure okay awesome thanks guys so just want to make sure i wasn't missing emily somewhere uh so first of all huge congratulations to um students that are that have been admitted to the university of cincinnati's uh, middle childhood education program here at uc um, you know, it's a big accomplishment and we are so excited that you guys are even considering us um, so we definitely are excited for each of you. Congratulations and uh, look forward to kind of visiting with you tonight, hopefully answering some questions and talking a little bit more about this program as you guys are thinking about, you know, these big decisions coming down the road as far as what is the next step for you, what's that going to look like and uh, what are you going to call home for the next few years. So just to kind of briefly go over what we are going to do, we're going to keep it pretty simple and uh, provide opportunities for students and faculty to share as much information as possible, then allow you guys to answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, but just really going over the program, talking about life as a student, and then having time for Q&A for, for, uh, for this program. So first of all, program overview. Uh, the middle childhood education and really the school of education um, overall highlights for the school. Urban education is, is a huge component within, within our education program. And I know, uh, Susan, you're on here, and, and I think you probably do a, a much better job of explaining the importance of this within our curriculum, if you don't care to share a little bit about that aspect of it. Sure. Uh, so we, uh, because we're uh, a, a urban school university sit, situated in the middle of a big city, uh, our whole college has a has an expectation that we will prepare students for teaching in urban environments. And we have uh, multiple field experiences, but at least one of your field experiences, if you come here, will be in an urban setting. And uh, overall, we prepare you to teach anywhere, but I think we want, uh, we, we really try to give you opportunities to, to uh, go beyond your comfort zone, potentially, uh, if you're not already from an urban background, uh, to just learn more about the different kinds of people and neighborhoods and kids that you can teach here in the Cincinnati area and beyond. I don't know, I think maybe it's, uh, maybe Kirby or Maggie would want to say something else about their experiences with their urban placements. I, 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 we'll, we will certainly get into that here in a little bit, so 
um, you guys will definitely have an opportunity to talk about your experiences. Um, and Emily, I think Emily was able to just join us. Emily, do you care to say, hey, what year you are in your, in your concentration areas? You may have to unmute yourself. There you go. Emily, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Hey, do you care to let us know what, introduce yourself, what year your content areas? Yeah, so I'm Emily Holfelder. I'm a first year middle childhood education major, um, and my focus areas are English and social studies. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Emily. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to stop it. Let's go to this. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of additional opportunities available as well within the program, you're, you're gonna see things like, you know, career expos, mock interview opportunities, just a lot of networking things. So that'll just be one of those things that's just built into the program. A lot of opportunities that our faculty strive to make sure that students have opportunities to set themselves up for success. Uh, and then obviously the experience aspect of this from freshman year through senior year, you're gonna be getting experiences that's gonna look different as you progress through the program. Um, so getting more in depth, and further into the program, more responsibility, the hands-on experience looks very different as you get into the student teaching aspect compared to your first year where you're really getting introduced to the classroom and exploring what that looks like and, and doing a lot of observing opportunities, mixing with, I'm sure, hands-on opportunities as well. But then we'll talk a little bit about the student teaching placements and how that is incorporated into this program. Um, and so the middle child education program Big things to, be, to make note of. So it's gonna prepare you to teach grades four through nine. That is the licensure that students are able to sit for and obtain once they pass that licensure exam. Uh, big thing with our program now is it is a dual licensure program, meaning you're able to obtain your teaching license not only in, in those two content areas of your choosing from four through nine, but also getting that intervention specialist license with special education, specifically the mild to moderate intervention specialist. And, uh, you know, I have my things that I like to say about like why that's, that's beneficial, but I'm actually going to let our program coordinator talk about, you know, why that's something that, why now are we adding that to our program? Because it is fairly new uh, addition to the program. And how does that benefit a student getting that dual licensure? Uh -oh. oh, well, I would say that uh, it's really an exciting opportunity. I think the state, uh, uh, the state of Ohio is moving to this model over the long run, I think, to provide uh, middle childhood classroom teachers with the background to be inter intervention specialists in their own classrooms. And uh, UC is one of the first uh, public schools that, uh, that is, is doing that. Uh, and you can get both licenses, what makes UC special is you get both licenses with the same amount of credit hours that you would uh, for just the middle childhood education license. We try to build in all of the, the special education uh, teaching into all of our general ed courses. And so when you're finished, you'll have the option to be certified in uh, just middle childhood or you could also get your, or you could get your intervention specialist license, or you can have both. And I think uh, this will just make you much, much more marketable uh, out there in the teacher ed world. Uh, schools and principals really uh, need people in special education, and uh, <clears throat> you wouldn't have to be special education only. Having that expertise in your background, whether you get the license or not, to really support the learning needs of all of the students in your classroom is going to make you a better teacher overall. And we're excited to, off excited to offer this opportunity. Right, thank you. Uh, then I'd like to mention the two content areas from that list there. Students do, first and foremost, they choose any two. Um, there's no specific or magic secret sauce to the two, but just pick any two that you are most interested in learning about. Of course, you know, don't necessarily pick content areas that you think um, will be most beneficial for you because you think you should do it, but pick the content areas that you are going to be interested in learning about because you are going to take several courses in those areas. So be mindful of those things as well. 
So um, what I like to do now, I'm actually get, I have several like kind of first year examples of what the the curriculum will look like your freshman year, depending on your student areas. So like for example here, here's English Arts and Science. If you were to have those two content areas, here's an example of some of the courses there within your first year. Um, students, do you guys want to talk a little bit about you know, remind me your content areas and what were some of the courses that you took in your first year and how they benefited you in your program? Because when you think about, you know, I don't know, for some people, when you go to college, your first year, you may not take courses in your specific major. And um, I think we do a great job of really getting students into their program early for, to first, you know, is this something that I really want to do, right? Is this the major that I should be in, taking those major specific courses and then you know, and then using those courses to prepare them for the for the overall, you know, career goal as far as working in that area. Yeah, so uh, Corbin, you kind of hit on uh, what happens your first two years uh, with your classes and what you kind of uh, can expect. Uh, your first two years of classes uh, are the pre cohort, uh, meaning before you guys really get into the program. But these two years are extremely important because uh, to become a licensed educator, uh, you have to go through uh, different licensure exams that uh, are related to these first two years in your uh, course curriculum. Me, I took uh, science and math uh, classes to be prepared for my cohort years, but those science and uh, math classes actually prepared me to take these um, licensure exams that I had to take these past year uh, to become a licensed educator once I graduate. Um, so those first two years are extremely important and they also get you into the field of education. Um, not only are you taking these math and science courses, but you're also taking intro to ed, ed which is a great opportunity, uh, which Maggie can definitely hit more on with her experiences in that class. And um, the other classes like ed tech and ed psych, um, those really uh, bring you into more of what you can bring into the field, so. Um, going off what Kirby said, I definitely enjoyed all of the intro to education courses along with the beginning math and science courses um, for my major. Um, one thing that I really liked about all my um, intro education courses is that I was with the same students over and over again, so I really got to know the people in my major. Um, so it's definitely beneficial to be in those smaller classes with about 30 people like starting off your first year. So classes like intro to ed or even educational psychology might be like that, um, and even ed tech. Um, another one my favorite courses that's on this list um, was Individuals with Exceptionalities, which was actually um, paired with educational psychology. And we actually got to go to an elementary school and work one-on-one -on -one with students on reading and math. Um, and then we actually stayed at the elementary school and then we had our own um, class time there. So it was a really great opportunity to be hands-on in the classroom um, within my first semester on campus, which I really loved. So. Yeah, the wonderful thing that UC offers, especially in their education program, is that you're going to have those education classes your first year, which I am currently living right now. And um, I had educational technology my first semester, so last semester for fall. And that class just really broadened my horizons on what education was and what I thought of it and got me heavily involved into the field really fast. Um, my professor was absolutely amazing. And I even got the chance to go to the and speak at the Ohio Educational Technology Conference. And it's only my first year. So um, professors and curriculum here do just a wonderful job of making sure that this is the field that you want to be in and getting you involved to what you're really passionate about. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, and like, these are just a few of the examples. Like, I think I have like, like here's language arts and math uh, for other content areas. Like I said, it can be any two of the four. These are just some of the examples uh, I have on here. And you have language arts and social studies. Um, but if anyone like wants to see a list of what the curriculum looks like for um, your the two content areas that you're interested in. Uh, my email will be at the end of this. Feel free to send me an email. I'll send you a link to the curriculum map for the two combination content areas that you might be interested in seeing in this program. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the student teaching aspect of the program. So obviously your first, your first year, um, your first two years is 
um, you know, you have observation experiences. And I, I definitely like to hear from you students, you know, how important was the first year experiences to you uh, in your program? And then also talking about for those of you that have, you know, stepped into the student teaching portion of the program, what does that look like for you? How is that, how is that preparing you for teaching? Well, I know for me, um, especially since I'm still in my first year, uh, my first semester of college with the classes that I was taking at the time, I was required, required to have 30 hours of observation, which I ended up doing in an eighth grade classroom, which was really beneficial because I was able to determine that this was the age group I really cared, I really enjoyed teaching and I enjoyed being around kids of that age. And this semester, at least when we were um, on campus, I was taking that individuals with exceptionalities course where I did go to that elementary school and work with second graders. So it was a different age group, but working with second grade, I was able to see within my first year that this was not the age group I wanted to teach and that sticking with those eighth graders was where I really wanted to go. So having that um, diverse age group experience within my first year has helped me to know that I am in the right major in terms of early childhood versus middle childhood versus secondary. Right. I think from the perspective of someone that's in their third year, um, definitely getting all of those experiences in the classroom freshman and sophomore year um, made me feel really comfortable going into my student teaching practicum this spring. Um, so it was definitely a benefit to already have that solidified, like I know I'm in the right place, I know I'm in the right major. Um, so then going into the classrooms, like I could focus on other things like how to really work one-on-one -on -one with students and how to make lessons more accessible for all students rather than just trying to figure out if education was the right fit for me. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, what was said previously about uh, being able to be comfortable knowing what you are uh, getting into and also if you enjoy what you're doing. Um, I knew by my first year, uh, this is what I wanted to do through experiences of observation and uh, the different grades I was able to get into. Uh, I think that's one of the very, very um, awesome opportunities that UC is able to give us is I was able to be in a fourth grade, an eighth grade, a seventh grade, a fifth grade class. Uh, that's almost my whole grade band and being able to pick like, oh, I like this grade. Oh, you know, I maybe want to go a little older or younger um, was an awesome, awesome opportunity. And now being in my senior year uh, and almost done now, um, the comfortability aspect helped out so much once I got to my uh, full-time student teaching because I knew this was my passion and I knew this is where I wanted to be. Awesome guys, thanks. Um, Susan, did you have anything to add to the student teaching portion of the program? And Well, I, I would just like to say that we do try to, uh, as much as we can, try to focus on letting you do your student teaching in the subject area that's your favorite and then do your junior placements in the subject area that's your sort of your second choice. Uh, we also, uh, you also have the opportunity, which I don't think everyone across the state of Ohio has, to be in the same room uh, for all year for your student teaching. So while you're in the first semester, while you still have a lot of on-campus classes and responsibilities, you do start out the year uh, in, in August with the kids as the teachers starting out. So you get to see what it's like to begin a school year with the students. And then you'll visit that classroom a couple of times a week in the morning. And then in the spring semester, you're still in the same classroom and you get to spend the whole day with them. And uh, uh, I can say that no matter how awesome our classes are, once students get out into those practicums and uh, student teaching experiences, it, it, it's their favorite part. And I think uh, that's a good thing because if it's not your favorite part, then you maybe you're going into the wrong field. But, uh, but we have some, uh, uh, I think the students did an outstanding job of describing our field placements. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about life as a student. And I met some students that, that might be uh, on here or, or watching this later, you know, you might be thinking about, is this a place for me? And, uh, you know, it's 
the, with the times we are in right now, it, it might be one of those things where you were planning on visiting campus and, and now you can't. Uh, so obviously one of our goals through this is to hopefully provide some insight to you um, as you're thinking about, you know, an institution um, that you want to try to call home. Is it going to fulfill some of the things that you're looking for as a student? You know, what is, what is life going to look like? Uh, what are resources, what, are, what important resources that are important to you, are they available here? And so, you know, having this opportunity to hear from students and hearing from faculty, hopefully this will give an opportunity when, you know, obviously we can't, we can't see you in person. We, we would love to visit with you and talk to you in person like we typically do, but we, since we can't do that right now, it's going to work. So there's a few things we want to kind of bring up and talk about. Um, but of course, if you have questions, feel free to post them in our chat box on the event. We'll be sure to, to address those questions throughout. Um, but one thing that's really important we bring up a lot is the role of an academic advisor in our college. You know, we have dedicated advisors assisting students. And so we actually have advisors just specifically to assist our students in education. And so they are, you know, they're huge. They are they're your heroes, as you can see in the picture there. Um, they are our heroes. They assist our students through a variety of ways uh, as they partner with the faculty in the college. So it's, it's a big, it's a big team environment, it's a big family environment. And so your academic advisors are just great resources, a great advocate for someone to, for you to lean on and, and to go to with any questions you have, making sure you're staying on track to graduation and education. You guys have like required appointments with your advisors. Uh, just to make sure you're staying on track with things. But do you guys want to share a little bit about the role of your academic advisor and how they've assisted you through your college program? I'll start. I'm, this is Susan, the program coordinator, before the other students start. Uh, I'll just say that we have the very best advisors in the whole university. And uh, students lean on them. They're so supportive and uh, they will help you make it through. And if you do find out that teaching is not the thing for you, they'll help you, uh, guide you to help you find another career. Yeah, my, especially my first year, my counselor has been just incredible in helping me with scheduling. Um, over winter break, the, that five week period between, I was having a bunch of scheduling issues and I was trying to add in a certificate and I was really stressed out because I couldn't, I wasn't on campus and obviously we were on break and my counselor took the time to conference call me and work through my schedule and help me through all of the scheduling errors that I was having. And it was just really thoughtful and just calmed me down. I was really stressed out about it. And they're always there um, if you need to make an appointment or you have just um, problems within scheduling or academics. Yeah, so my experience uh, with the academic advisors have been absolutely amazing. I actually uh, transferred into education from business. And uh, the way that the academic advisors were able to help me out was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was a very, very easy transition. And uh, the first meeting I ever had with them, um, they mapped out the rest of my college, basically, and all that stress and um, anxiety that comes with scheduling classes was gone, uh, because they already did it all for me. And um, just having that for you and having that resource, resource for you at all times um, is absolutely amazing. I would definitely agree with what Emily and Kirby said. Um, I can't sing their praises high enough. Um, the advisors that we have in the College of Education are definitely always on your team 100% um, and they're always working really hard um, to help students out. So they're never one of those people that would take forever to email back. Like they always email back within 24 hours answering all your questions. So they're definitely a valuable resource that every student should utilize when they're at UC. Thanks, guys. Um, so let's talk a little bit about campus life. Um, we will, one of the topics we'll definitely talk about are student organizations, and we'll, we'll go into that here in a second. Um, but first, let's talk a little bit about the life of a student on campus. You know, um, unfortunately, like I said, some students may not have been able to visit campus, but uh, the next best thing is just hearing from the students who, when you are on campus, you know, what does life look like for you? What 
um, thinking back on maybe your first year, if, if you're not a, currently a first year student, what dorm room did you live in? You know, do you have any recommendations as far as, you know, where you lived? Did you enjoy it? Was that, what was that experience like uh, to the dining halls? Did you go to the rec center often? I know we have a great rec center. I believe it's a top ranked rec center in the country. Um, but a lot of ways to get involved on campus. You know, how did you manage navigating <clears throat> homework and being involved in, uh, in sports and going to events and things like that? You know, feel free to share about what that looked like for you as you're on campus. Um, reflecting back on my first year on campus, um, I actually lived in the dorms that are called Stratford Heights. Um, they're really, really close to the College of Education building. So if you're gonna end up being an education student at UC, I highly encourage you living over there. It makes campus super accessible. Um, but if not, I all of my friends that have lived in the dorms have all loved their experience. Um, I have a best friend who, her family actually only lives five minutes away from campus, but she still chooses to live on campus just to get the whole campus experience. And um, she doesn't regret it at all. She has absolutely loved it. Um, and I know like going um, on campus can be overwhelming, but one thing that I really love about UC's campus is how it is really compact and there's no roads going through it um, like some other bigger universities have. Um, so that was definitely one thing that I loved about UC um, when I was looking at it as a prospective school. Um, and I definitely love how anywhere you can get within 10 minutes and there's a bunch of good restaurants in the surrounding area. So you're never not gonna have anything to do and there's so much to be involved in, which is really great. Yeah, I am currently a first year and I live in Sadal, or I lived, I guess, in Sadal Hall, um, which is those two, I, Calhoun and Sadal, it was like huge buildings, um, residence hall buildings that you'll see on campus. And I highly, highly, highly recommend traditional dorm lifestyle, I guess you could say. Um, it was such a great experience for me and I met a lot of my best friends through that and my floor. Um, it was just a really great experience, a, a shared experience definitely um, living in one of the older dorms on campus that you um, all bond over where you're living and I just love how campus um, can, like she said, definitely feel really overwhelming and big at first, but once you get on campus and you get your bearings, um, it's a wonderful community. Um, and the rec center, I know that Corbin talked about it, is awesome on campus. Um, it's a great way. They have a lot of group fitness classes. Um, my friends and I would always go um, during the year, and I ended up actually working there um, later at the end of my first year. So there's definitely a lot to do and you're never really bored on campus. Cool, thanks guys. So, oh, oh, sorry, you wanna go ahead and go Kirby? Um, yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, if you have the opportunity, definitely live on campus. Uh, you meet all your friends, uh, it's a great time. Uh, there's so much things to get involved with, which we're gonna talk about here later, but um, really, really take advantage of the opportunity if, if you can to live on campus. Cool. Um, we we'd have a couple questions come in. I know some of you have already addressed. I know Maggie talked about you know what made her decide to attend UC, but you know anyone else? What what were some major factors when you were thinking about making a decision, and when you ultimately decided to attend UC? What really helped make that decision for you? I know at least for me personally, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, so um, location was a big factor for me. It was two hours away so it wasn't too far but it also wasn't too close um, but I also really wanted a larger campus um, so that I could really broaden um, where I had come from and UC definitely does a great job of that. I have met so many different people um, from all over just by coming here and it's I've really grown as a person just within my first year. So um, the reason why I chose UC was a couple reasons, actually. Uh, the first thing was I'm from the uh, Cincinnati area. I'm from Mason, Ohio. Uh, and making the decision to come to UC was um, almost like home to me. I knew I was going to be coming to UC ever since I was younger. So uh, that decision was, was very, very easy to make. But the other decision was trying to find a place that's going to make me feel like 
I'm at home, but I also can um, be successful in my environment. Uh, UC definitely gives you this experience because it is a large university. Um, but the way that it's laid out, the way that they make it feel, uh, it doesn't feel like you're a small fish in a large pond. Um, and the way that they were able to do this was absolutely amazing. And it's through everything we're talking about now, but um, that was definitely the reason why I uh, chose to come here to UC. I think for me, one of the biggest reasons why I decided to come to UC was um, I really did love the education program and how I knew that I was going to be getting experience my first year. Um, and also just going back to that commitment to urban schooling that we have, um, that was something I really didn't have a chance to experience growing up with the type of schooling that I had. Um, so definitely getting that um, experience has been something that's been really valuable to me so I know what type of setting I want to teach in for the future. Uh, and we did get another question, and I, we've talked, we've touched on this probably a few in a few ways, but when thinking about, you know, when you're going into an institution and it's important for students probably to have opportunities when you first get there and not like have to wait to be involved in things, whether it's in your major or other areas, but what do you guys feel like there were a lot of opportunities for you uh, when you first got to the university? Definitely, I would say that is true. Um, when you're a freshman, you're required to move in um, slightly earlier than everybody else. So you and there's like a welcome week just to get you involved. And um, they have you go to your college day, um, the Saturday before classes start, where you get to know the other people in your major and you get to learn about all of the organizations in your major, which is actually where I found out about CCH ambassadors, I would not have be in this if I hadn't met them um, when I first got to the university and they introduced themselves. But there's also the fall organization fair, which they have all of the freshmen attend um, that weekend. So you're really able to see all of the student organizations that they have on campus and you're not really lost. Like I was met so many different organizations just within that first weekend. Um, all right, so let's, uh, speaking of organizations, thank you for that segue there. <laughs> um, speaking of organizations, there are a lot, a lot of organizations that students can be involved with. And um, I think I'm, <laughs> I have the wrong student groups on this page, but uh, there are also like the Middle Childhood Club. I think Maggie, you are Maybe the, are you the president, Maggie, of the Middle Childhood Club? Yeah, me and one other girl who I met my freshman year in education, we are co-presidents of Middle Childhood Education Society. Um, so we do a lot of like community service type activities, but also stuff that's professional development for kids in our major, so. Okay, because yeah, I see I have like the early childhood one up there, but we also have other student groups associated with different majors. And so um, Maggie, maybe you can go into more about the Middle Childhood Club and what you do in there. Yeah, so we completely focus on what it means to be a middle ed teacher. Um, so we have done teacher panels in the past. We've worked closely with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we've gone to tutoring centers um, and brought all of our members. We've done um, educational demonstrations with um, like how to do different types of science experiments in the science classroom. So we've definitely done a wide range of activities and programming um, for the middle ed students um, at UC, which has been a lot of fun, so. Cool. And then um, as far as like, you know, there's always different clubs and organizations. You know, we, I think some students, I hear them talking about like the milkshake club, you know, there are those or sports organizations, a Waffle House Club, whatever other opportunities that you you know, you wanted to be involved with, there are those, and I, then I also have, like, like I mentioned, like the Middle Childhood Club, and there's the CECH Ambassadors that you guys are currently involved with, there's the Minority Association of Future Educators, which is a great group for students um, to be involved with there, uh, but, you know, all of you feel free to share about what are some of the things that you guys as students have been involved with, whether it's, in, you know, in your major, or something that's helped you maybe just, like, you know, blow off some steam, got involved in a sports organization, you know, what were some of the other things that you guys have enjoyed as students that you've been able to get involved with? 
One of the other clubs on campus that I would really advise for any education student to join is called Bearcat um, Buddies, which is a tutoring club on campus. So they'll pick you up on campus and they'll actually shuttle you over to one of the local elementary or high schools. Um, and you get to do one-on-one -on -one tutoring with like a kid or a classroom, which is really amazing. Um, and those also count for service hours and sometimes they can count for observation hours. Um, so if you're an education student and end up at UC, um, definitely look into that. Um, another club that I'm a part of is I'm a part of Greek life on campus, so I'm a part of Zeta Tau Alpha. Um, so if you're interested in Greek life, um, we do fall recruitment. So if that's something that you want to be a part of, definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, and that's definitely a wide group on our campus. Um, but if you want to be a part of it, it's definitely an option. If not, um, I know like my friend, she joined the rugby club her freshman year. Um, that was a lot of fun. She absolutely killed it. Our rugby team is amazing. They make it to nationals. It's kind of insane. Um, but then there's also the fun clubs like Corbin was talking about, like hammocking club or milkshake club and just things that are silly. So there's a lot of options. Yeah, I'll uh, add in real quick. Uh, the student organizations, there's organizations for everybody. Uh, there are a wide, wide range of them. Um, the great thing about them is it's an opportunity for you to meet people who are interested in things that you're interested in. Uh, so take advantage of that. Um, a lot of examples that we gave were um, clubs uh, like, like Greek life or major related clubs are just fun things like milkshake club or uh, hammock club or anything like that. Um, just being able to know they're there and know that's a, a place you can go to, to create relationships with people that um, have similar interests. Cool. Thanks guys. Uh, so I always like to talk about, you know, opportunities for, um, just diversifying your experience. So UC has a lot of great opportunities. If you uh, ever thought about doing like study abroad opportunities or experiences, or even if it's just like a short term uh, trip, uh, whatever that looks like, there's a lot of ways for students to be able to take advantage of those experiences. And I only bring that up because uh, it is something that I think is important that I think as a student, you should at least consider and look into those options and uh, explore what that might look like and, and what are some ways that you could, could go out and, and travel because this is a great time in your life to, to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, there is funding available out there that you can apply for. So you may be able to qualify for some funding and scholarship opportunities to help offset some of the costs that are, that are out there when it comes to doing these kinds of experiences. Um, but I know for education, it's one of those things where if you want to do a study abroad, and it's like if you want to do a whole semester, uh, it's important to have those conversations with advisors and faculty to help kind of navigate and also navigating that early on in the program. But, um, but or you can always think about doing something in the summertime or there are those like shorter term, uh, shorter kind of trips. I know we had students that previously went to like London and explored some of the education systems over there. Um, but whatever that looks like, we definitely encourage you to explore those options. Students, faculty, do you, any of you have anything to add about this uh, for students that might be thinking about this? Uh, as a faculty member, I can say that uh, while it would be very difficult to do a semester abroad during your uh, last two years, you could, it wouldn't really be possible without adding more time. We have so many students who do study abroad in the summer. We've had students uh, go to, uh, different countries in Europe, to uh, Costa Rica, Colombia, and, uh, and, the, and they all come back uh, really energized. And mit oftentimes those uh, experiences involve doing some uh, cultural exchanges in schools with kids from other countries. Uh, and this is a really great experience. Uh, and it's caused some of our people to become interested in international education. Uh, and that's uh, something that uh, once you get uh, that we can help you explore if you're interested in doing that in the future. Great, thank you. That, and that's actually a great a great thing to I, I do. I think I feel like I get questions about about that. So it's good to know that we have resources in place for students that if that's an, if that's something that they're interested in, it's an opportunity that's still available to them down the road. Um, we've talked a lot about experiential learning. You know, the, the classroom experience is vast. There's a lot of it, and it's going to start from your freshman year, which is really, really important. We've talked about why that's important. 
Um, but you know, this I definitely wanted to make sure we kind of come back to this. And so students and faculty, this is definitely a time for you just to really share maybe some specific examples of things that you uh, haven't had a chance to talk about yet and in your experiential learning and what that has looked like for you and, um, and the value it's played on, on you in this program. And, and even Susan, feel free to talk about, you know, some of the things that maybe students may not think about when we're thinking about, you know, when we send students out to get these experiences, you know, the, the importance of that from the faculty lens might be something for you to consider talking about as well. Uh, okay, I'll start because uh, the students may have more uh, exciting things to say, but but we work really hard to try to uh, to understand as faculty where our, our students are placed and what kinds of things they're being asked to do. We uh, coordinate with the field, uh, the field supervisors to make sure that there are there are experiences that go from our courses into uh, out into the field. People have to uh, gather data from students and analyze students and interview students as part of our uh, of our coursework. And then I think the other way that experiential learning uh, plays a role is that in many of the of the classes, for example, I am one of the math educators. Uh, we do a lot to try to help uh, students, our our teachers, experience. Uh, uh, lots of new different ways to learn that they may not have experienced in their own classroom. And we sort of give them a hands-on way to experience them that as, learner, with, as learners first, and then uh, think about how they'll use what they've learned out in the field uh, once they're, once they're uh, planning and in charge of their own lessons. And I will let the students say more about uh, experiential learning. Yeah, so um, being in my uh, final year, uh, this has been a process and a opportunity that uh, occurs every single year and almost every single semester while you're in um, the program. It has definitely made uh, the opportunities and experiences I have now feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more um, valuable because I understand what I'm being asked to do. Uh, like what Susan was talking about, um, interviewing students, um, interviewing, you know, your mentor teacher or uh, your field supervisor, uh, being able to experience what a classroom's like before you really take over. Um, all of that has really gained knowledge that I could never have experienced uh, without this. And um, the great thing is, it's not like it's adding extra work to your courses as well. They're almost... Uh, bringing it into the class where it doesn't feel like extra work. It feels like an opportunity. And this is definitely uh, shaped and molded the way that I will think about education in the future because of this, so. Thanks, Kirby. Going off of what Kirby said, our classrooms are definitely hands-on, um, but like even touching more on field experience, um, Susan had mentioned that we all have field coordinators, and this semester I had a really amazing field coordinator. Um, she was like an outstanding educational professional. professional. Um, she's written books. She's a big keynote speaker for education. So even just getting those experiences to meet someone in education who has had so many years of experience where they're able to offer you advice has been a really big part of my educational journey, I feel like, here at UC. Um, so getting that has been amazing and definitely something to look forward to in the middle ed program. And I would just add on that experiential learning um, happens even before you have your field placement in those third and fourth years. I know, especially my first year, um, specifically within technology, uh, technology within the classroom, that was something that I really found I had a passion for. And working with my professor, I was able to um, present at a showcase for the college and then co-present and present on my own at the Ohio um, Educational Conference and like getting those experiences and those opportunities so early on are so beneficial to your education journey in becoming a teacher and really getting to see like I guess behind the scenes of becoming an educator and really seeing all the work that gets put into it 
was just so um, great for me and just provided me at UC with so many opportunities within the education field, not just within my field placement when I get to my third year. There's so much before that too. Cool. Thank you guys. <clears throat> so I definitely want to have, uh, make sure we have some time to, to field some questions, answer some questions, and also um, I also want to make sure we do address, you know, I know with everything going on right now with with the coronavirus and, and all those things, this is a lot of just unique times. And so, first of all, I just wanna say, you know, for students, uh, you know, we're here for you, we're trying to provide these opportunities to assist you. And also just want, would love to hear from you guys as far as how you're doing. And so, you know, if you're not watching this live and you wanna, you know, uh, contact us later, feel free to do so. But, um, you know, if I know it's, this may not be your uh, what you envisioned your senior year at high school to be if you're a senior right now. Uh, you know, a lot of things have been rescheduled and, and just things that are just up in the air right now with how things are. So, you know, we're here to assist you and answer questions. So if you ever have questions about um, anything uh, or you need assistance with something or if you have if you, you know, if, if advice or tips on some resources that have been helpful for you as like how you try to stay connected with your friends and family members, uh, in this time right now. Uh, feel free to share those things as well. Um, I know I even got a question today from a student asking about, um, you know, orientation and is anything going to change with that? And uh, of course, we're working really hard to making sure that, you know, if, if, if we do need to accommodate things, we'll be ready for that. Um, I was, uh, I spoke with them today and they said, if you have questions about things, you can email orientation at uc.edu if you're if you've already registered for orientation and you have questions, um, nothing's really, nothing has changed at the moment, um, but we are, you know, obviously preparing for any, any situation that can happen down the road. So want to be, uh, open up those uh, opportunities for communication into the university that if you do have questions, feel free to email myself or, you know, other members at the institution to help answer any questions or concerns you may have moving forward. But if anyone does have any questions, now is the time to please feel free to post any other additional questions you may have. Uh, and we'll be happy to, to, to take those for you guys. Uh, and also uh, just going ahead and putting up our social media accounts on the screen. If you want to follow us later on other channels, feel free to do so. Um, also, like I said, if, you, if you're not watching live and you want to contact me, I have my phone number and email on the screen there. So feel free to reach out to me at, at a later time and I'll be happy to answer any additional questions you may have uh, about the middle childhood program uh, or hear anything at the University of Cincinnati. So as we kind of are coming to an end here and just kind of making sure we give time for anyone to post any additional questions that they may have, um, students and uh, Susan, do you guys have anything that you guys just want to talk about or share that you didn't get a chance to say? So I'll start. I would just love to see you here at uh, at UC. I'm I'm literally sitting probably uh, uh, five minutes away from UC. I can see the campus from uh, my apartment building, and it's just a fantastic place to be. And I would say that the middle childhood program is especially fantastic because all of your faculty will work together to make sure that you get the best experience that you can. And at the same time, we're preparing the, the most outstanding teachers to really meet the needs of kids uh, in schools. And we work hard to sort of uh, treat each other as a family and support each other. And, uh, uh, and we just can't wait to see you on campus. Uh, being, being about to graduate, I just got to add, uh, UC uh, means the absolute world to me. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without uh, the University of Cincinnati and um, all the great opportunities it's uh, given me, all the friendships and relationships it's given me, and all the um, mentors that the university was able to, um, to give to me. It really shaped the person I am today, and um, I really, really want that experience uh, for everybody who's interested. 
I would definitely agree with Kirby. Um, all of the people that I have classes with, like we always have group messages and we're always trying to hang out with one another. So I do feel like the people that are in my cohort for education, like we are like a little family, which is a lot of fun to be a part of um, and like get to see your best friends every day when you go to classes and you're working alongside them in schools, which is a lot of fun. Um, but also Kirby touched on like having people that are mentors to you in the future. Like you are learning from some really great professors who have had a lot of years um, in experience in education education and they've either done a lot of research in education or they've actually been like middle school teachers. Um, so just getting those resources that like I know um, one of our mentor teachers in the field this semester like she still reaches out to some of her UC professors and asks for like feedback on lesson plans and assessments. So knowing that I'll have that in the future is really reassuring and something that I look forward to. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, um, we are coming to a conclusion here. Uh, I'm going to leave it up for a minute. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, we can field questions in the chat box as well. But thank you so much for um, just taking the time to listen to this. And um, again, congratulations uh, for those of you that are listening that are admitted to UC this fall and that you are uh, you know, thinking about coming here, we're just thrilled that you're even you're considering our program, and, and we're here to really, first of all, let you know that we're here to assist you. We're here to help you. We're here to help you kind of figuring out uh, some of those decisions as you're, as you're navigating things in, an, in a different way that you may not have planned on navigating now, um, as you know, campuses are not available for visiting, all those sort of things. So, if there's something that we can do to help your decision, if we can provide more information, if you want to meet with uh, student or you want to meet with Susan, you want to meet with the program coordinator, they're, they're open and available to, to visit with you and, and more than willing to do so um, to assist you in any way that we can do, in any way that we can. So don't hesitate to contact me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to assist you guys. Um, and so if you have questions, you have concerns, or there are obstacles in your way that you're not sure how to navigate that, um, let us know, contact us. And, and if there's a way for us to help you with that, with that obstacle or whatever concern you have, we're here to assist you with those things. And so feel free to contact us in any, in any way that we can and we'll, we will do what we can to help you. Um, but again, thanks for being here um, and go Bearcats. <laughs>